right, first thing I want to look at is, uh, you know, pronation during the throwing motion. Um, this is uh, Clay Hensley, who uh, did have a couple pretty good years up in the big leagues. This is him uh, in Double A Mobile. On the left, we're looking at a fastball. On the right, we're looking at a, uh, a slider. Clay had a little bit more of a three quarters delivery, and uh, even though his hand position was more like a curveball, um, he still called it a slider. Now, you know, at this point, he looks virtually the same in, uh, for both pitches. By this frame, you can see how uh, on the breaking ball, his hand is starting to move to the side of the ball. Okay, and, and here you can really see the difference. On the fastball, the fingers are positioned directly uh, behind the baseball, and we're going to plot force directly through the center of the ball. Here's your breaking ball where the fingers are positioned off to the side, obviously, and the force is applied away from the center of the baseball, which is going to uh, result in spin. And here you can see it very, very clearly uh, on the fastball, the fingers still directly behind the ball. And here we are just before release on the breaking ball uh, with the fingers off to the side. Now again, we see you know similarities here. Obviously, um, the fastball is released uh, a little bit before the breaking ball. That may be a result of slightly faster arm speed on the fastball, uh, and it may just be that the film at 60 frames a second doesn't exactly match up. And again, 60 frames a second, that's that's pretty fast. You're you're getting 60 different pictures, you know, in one second. Anyway, again, the point was to show pronation occurs uh, on, on all good throwing actions. And you can see with the fastball, the hand turns over immediately after release. Okay, the breaking ball, again, that's maybe, you know, a, a, a third of a frame behind. Uh, but the breaking ball, there's release. And then immediately after release, it also pronates. So... Again, that, that is my point. In, in any good throwing action, you're going to, you know, in you're going to have uh, extension and pronation. You know, release, extension, pronation, immediately after the ball is let go. Now, one other reason why pronation uh, may be slightly behind uh, on the breaking ball as opposed to the fastball is because here the hand is more pronated. In other words, it doesn't have as far to go to turn outward. It goes from, uh, you know, directly behind the ball to over. Whereas on the breaking ball, the hand is off to the side. Okay, we get release, and it has to, you know, make a, you know, an additional quarter turn to get pronated. But regardless, okay, any time we throw, the hand is going to pronate. Now, some people have said that because this hand does have to turn uh, farther on the breaking ball after release when it pronates, that that is, you know, a cause for uh, curve balls, breaking balls, injuring the shoulder or elbow. It's, you know, one theory that's out there and, and uh, could perhaps be a contributor. Uh, however, this same grip, the same positioning of the hand, uh, is what we see in football. In other words, in football, the hand's off to the side, uh, the football is released, and then the hand turns over to the same degree, and, and we don't see um, the same injuries there. You know, at the same time, because of the weight of the ball, the arm doesn't travel quite as fast. For me, the biggest danger of the breaking ball uh, is when players try to force spin on the ball. In other words, for the you know the right-handed pitcher, they're going to get a right-to-left breaking action. Uh, they know this, and so they they feel like they need to uh, move their hand in that direction to create you know extra spin. And so what happens is they you know what I like to say is they they fight the pronation. So in other words, we get release here, and that hand's going to turn outward. Um, but what you'll see you know some kids do is you know the the hand will turn outward, but they will abruptly stop this motion um, which is where you know the damage can occur 
both the shoulder and elbow on on you know fighting the pronation in other words they stop it here and then they will try to bring the hand back over to the side and under uh, you know they, they really they don't realize that they're even pronating they don't realize that the hand is turning out um, so th they release here and they think they want to keep spinning they think they want to keep turning their hand under the ball here and kind of wind up in this curled position you know to where that hand continues uh, you know right to left instead of just allowing the hand to naturally pro, uh, pronate and by abruptly stopping this is a very rapid rapid movement okay uh, it's actually the fastest movement in the human body is is uh, is this radial ulnar uh, movement of the uh, uh, forearm and hand so it's moving very very fast at this point um, and it takes a lot of force to stop it and then they, they try to reverse it you can even see maybe a little of it here you know with clay I mean the ball is gone at this point so this idea that we need to hold this this position or get back to this position where the you know the hand comes back underneath and kind of hold that curveball position that that you see coaches teach is kind of silly the ball's gone the hand can no longer apply any force to it um, and and we should just allow it to pronate and, and leave it pronated which is what's taught in, in, in you know quarterback throwing but you can see it a little bit here in clay uh, even though this hand pronated later you know this hand is still very much turned out here that hand is still you know very much pronated he really allowed that thing to pronate which is you know the action that's really taught on on change-ups especially uh, is to is to you know turn that hand out and and here on the breaking ball again even though it it, it pronated later he's already kind of back uh, to a more supinated position with his hand and here maybe one more frame of you kind of see that that, that curveball finish position versus uh, this pronated position okay so again that, that on a good throw good mechanic uh, throw that hand is going to pronate it's always going to pronate curveball fastball change up shortstop catcher it's always going to pronate um, so don't fight the pronation don't try to spin the baseball let your grip let the grip create the spin just by you know gripping here and releasing here the force is applied off center which is what creates the spin here the force is applied through the center uh, so you're not going to um, get spin or, or nearly as much not not side to side spin here's Luke Carlin um, another big league player and again uh, the catcher obviously wants the fingers positioned directly behind the baseball um, to give him true flight, in other words, less side to side spin. So fingers position behind, and immediately after release, we see that hand really turn over and pronate. Okay. You know, he just let, let lets the hand and arm do what it does, you know. And so he doesn't get in a hurry to bring that hand back. Okay, taking a look here at uh, Kevin Euclid uh, with the sidearm infielder's throw, which again more closely resembles uh, the hitting action. And you can see the top hand pronating, getting over the top just after release. Take a look at it again. Again, the elbow works up. As he gets it out of the glove, the elbow works to the ball. And then we get extension and pronation through release. Okay, again, one more time. See the fingers behind the ball, and then right through release. Now the hand over the top, right after release.